Welcome to episode four of the engine room, brought to you by Land Rover, guys. Episode four. Extra at home, Ross, mate, Dunkey. I know it's your competition, but he was on fire, wasn't he? Fantastic performance. Fantastic performance. Could you even see the post though when you were kicking it goal? Struggling, but it wasn't actually that bad on the pitch. I thought um, it was probably worse from in the stands or watching it back. Um, but no, yeah, it was a good, good win. Absolutely dominated them, controlled the game. What went well there, do you reckon? Uh, thought the forwards played well. Demo was pretty good. Gave us some good momentum, ball carrying. Um, dodge over ball. Machine. Let, well, good? let's just, should we take a moment? Yeah, we'll take, we take a yeah. moment here to put a little bit of time in for Dodge. How bloody good is he? Yeah, really good. Right, you can't just keep telling yeah, really good. How good <laughs> nah, is he? Nah, nah, to be fair, his, um, his timing and he getting his body in positions to get Jackals is, is top drawer. Um, but also, he's a, he's a pretty freak athlete. Um, he's strong as an ox, really quick. Really skillful. I've just never seen him kick goals. We're moving on to the Glasgow players that have actually impressed us. That's that's oh, quite fitting go. that we've just spoke about Rory Dodge. <coughs> Who else has impressed you, Dunkey? Um, thinking of a back's perspective, Sione's done well. Um, real physical ball carrier. Um, made some really good reads in defence as well. But he's just his his whole energy within the squad has has been. Outstanding since he's came in. Uh, and then, uh, what, what's his kicking like? Um, any long distance kicking, he drops the ball like a plate of spaghetti and meatballs. But his short kicking game is nothing short of outstanding. Genuinely, he's grubbers and little chips. He's got a lovely touch on his right peg. For you, in the backs, let's stay with the backs. Someone else sticks backs. into mine for me. Josh McKay. Ah, there he is. Yeah. There McCoy. He is. He's been good since he's come over. Doesn't train much, but... No, he um, doesn't, does he? Does it, on, does it on game day. Um, no, nah, he's been good. Good good ball carrying. Um, got a sort of secret big right foot. For me, Josh always looks like he's got time. Time on the ball. Like, even when the opposition... If I'm in the backfield and they put a little kick through, and Ross, you'll be in a similar yeah. vein at this you're at panic stations, like you're sprinting to that ball, like there's no tomorrow to try and gather it and just defuse it. He, the, the guy's just skipping along the, the floor. He'll maybe catch it. M remember the run against Lara Shell? He beat like 10 defenders, no joke, 10 defenders. Bouncing off boys all the time. And then he looks like he's just got so much time and it's just effortless. And um, yeah, I hate him for that. <laughs> anyway, here we go into the bit that everyone wants to hear about. The reason we've got you two wonderful men are on is because we're talking about the position of the fly half, the number 10. And the question I've got here is, Ross, what is your kicking process? And the people out there want to know, mate, what are you whispering to yourself? Oh, I just talk through my routine. That's pretty much it. And which is, oh, you I'm not sure, I'm not, sure if I'm gonna, not sure if I'm going to share that, you know, keep it a secret. Yeah, mate, definitely. Yeah. Like, keep it to yourself and then sell it to someone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no. What percentage are you on at the moment? Um... I'm not sure, actually. Something like 90 something. I have no idea. Nin nine, well, I've actually got the stats here. I think it's 95%. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so, well done. Congratulations on that. But, yeah, so what, you sort of talk through your own... Just talk through my routine a bit, yeah. Um, I'm trying sure to think it. what that would be. It'd be like, right, one, two, three steps back. <laughs> one, two, three steps left. Look at the post. Look at the ball. Can he kick the ball to the post? Is it that sort of thing? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Is that it? Is no, that it's not <laughs> it. <but laughs> close, so close that. enough, close enough. Thank you, you got a similar thing? Yeah, I'll just, sometimes it can change, but I'll maybe have like, maybe max two little coaching points in my head that I'll just be repeating. I don't verbally mime it like Ross does, but it'll just be churning away in the background. Uh, and it could be as simple as keep my head down. Um, it could be stay nice and tall during the kick and, and get my leg to the target. Those type of cliches have you boys ever had a competition a kicking competition do you do that we normally do yeah. competitions yeah most yeah. days after training yeah. uh domingo being there as well george hornell from george Hornel. Hornel. Fancies Tom it Jordan. Normally. yeah right. now and then and who wins uh, can vary it can vary another question we got here is um obviously during the game 
calling plays? Does it come naturally? Is that something that Danny sort of pushes onto you? Is it something that boys are feeding in? Is it something you see yourself in terms of space, momentum? Um, I think so. I think it's something that tens generally do, like all the time throughout, like even when I was younger at school by rugby, going play, playing club rugby as well, tens sort of do it all the time. But I think now we uh, we kind of we, we all sort of rely on each other a bit and we'll bounce off each other to make decisions. Um, if someone doesn't think it's a good call, or if the forward normally if the forwards aren't happy with the call, with the number of people in the line out, uh, they can change it. A lot of it's to win the line out as well. So if the line out caller doesn't like the call that you've made, maybe if the the perfect backs launch is a seven man off the tail, right at the back, so you can go wide and you can put them under real stress where the line out forward would be. But no, I need a five man just to win the ball at the front, at the front off a check. And I guess that's why when I'm playing, you can just do anything you want because... You're such a good line-out jumper. Yeah. Talks through the process. Obviously, we get a penalty. How does the process work? I know the answer to this, but just for the people out there. How does the process work of uh, choosing if we go for the post or we go for the corner? Sometimes making line-out decisions will sort of will come together. Leaders, on-field leaders, captains will come together, take all the varying factors into account what the scoreboard's saying, um, how we're going momentum, and um, then we'll decide based on that if we're going to go for the points or go to the corner. As a captain, for me, it's made easier by you two because I just know if I need the three, just go to the point, go first. You boys will knock it over. Always got that. Generally, we try and stay between the 15s, would you say? Yeah. Yeah, no, no absolutely. When kicking to touch... Talk through your process. Do you have a target? I've, there's been a bit of chat around this this week, hasn't there? Obviously, we, we are fortunate enough that we've got billboards of the, the different sponsors around the pitch. Oh, how fortunate. Great. It's a great um, visual cue to target a billboard and uh, kick it to that billboard. Which one do you go for? The Land Rover thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, lovely. <laughs> Love that. So Can't we aim wait. for the, there's a Land Rover billboard right tucked down right in the five metre. This so week, hold on a minute. Uh, that's what, if you're sponsoring the club, you're asking, I want my billboard down in the corner for the 10th zone for. Absolutely. Anyway, that, people, is all we have time for, I'm afraid. So thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Please join us next time on The Engine Room, sponsored by Land Rover.